seems to be true. And my story begins in 2012 when I came back from my international assignment with AT&T Wireless in 2007. I bought an Action Coach business coaching franchise. So I was living in the Caribbean for uh, several years with at and It was a big hardship for me to live there. But when I came back to Breckenridge, Colorado, I bought a business coaching firm called Action Coach Business Coaching. And during that time, I was asked by the franchise to go to lunch with the Stella, who said that he wanted to be a business coach. And that's the way franchises work. They want you to speak to other franchisees while they're trying to sell it. And we sit down at my favorite restaurant, and we're talking. And I said, so where do you want to buy this business coaching firm? He said, oh, right here in Breckenridge, next to you. I was like, what? And I was so mad. And he said that I threw a book at him and stormed out of the restaurant. And then he called his best friend and said, if I'm ever getting married again, that's the woman I'm going to marry. So for five years, I was mean to this person. And then we ended up getting married, and now I am Mrs. Susan, Mr. William Frew, Mr. and Mrs. William Frew, and he was a plumber. So we joked that in 2012, when we finally got married, we merged our collective talents, and Sunshine Plumbing, Heating, Air was born. And I have coached 17 different trades and peripheral trades. So believe it or not, there are 17 different trades, including one that only cleans ceilings. So I coach the company that only cleans ceilings in restaurants. Very narrow corporation, up to a $40 million construction company. And that person was one of my students when I was teaching for the SBA Emerging Leaders. It was toward the tail end of the recession. He got his butt kicked really hard, and he was ready to sell. And the agreement was, the way he was going to sell, is that people were going to take over, and he was going to work there for a year and sit down the hall from the person who bought his company. And I said, do you really think that you can do that? Do you really think that after all the hard work and how you built this company from nothing into, at that time, a $15 million company, that you're going to be able to sit down the hall with your mouth shut while someone else runs your company. I said, I really need you to think about this before you do it. He did not sell the company, and now they are the number one minority-owned business in the state of Colorado, coming in at like $34 million a year. So sometimes it just takes a coach or someone to give you a little bit of a push in the right direction so that you do the right thing. And that is uh, what I've learned in coaching, that, and also what I've learned in coaching, I work with my husband. Many of you in the room may work with your spouse or other family members. Sometimes your family member can tell you a lot of different things, but when you hear it from a business coach that you're paying, you actually pay attention. So, so because when you're married, it's nagging, when you're a business coach, it's coaching, right? So uh, my husband and I, the way we manage our company is we have our lanes. I do this job, and it's documented. He does this job, and it's documented. And we are on opposite ends of the building from each other. So we seem to manage quite well. But for those of you who are laughing right now, you understand what I'm talking about. If you work with your spouse or children or parents or whatever that looks like in your business. So my story today is to tell you how we were able to grow our company in a very unique way. We were, what I was able to do is to take all of the lessons that I had learned from the 150 companies that I had coached and the 17 different trades and to use them in our own company. And one of the things I learned more emphatically than anything else is that we needed to step outside of the industry for good ideas. Because what I was finding in the industry, and I joined a lot of different associations that were you know, dedicated to our trade, from plumbing to heating, what have you, everyone was doing things the same way. And I'm going to share with you some of the things that we have done that's a little bit different. But before I roll into that, I know that you've heard that I'm from Colorado. When you hear Colorado, what do you think of, first thing? Green water bottles. Snow? <laughs> weed? Did I hear weed? Okay, well, I know that's what's on your mind, so let's just get this out of the way 
right now. This is what I look like when I'm home. <laughs> so I know that y'all think it is, so I'm like, well, we might as well just get that right out of the way. So there we are. Um, actually, marijuana does bring a lot of money to our state, and our roads are really improving, and a lot of great things are actually happening. So, you know, at first, none of us really wanted it, but it is actually making a, a good impact in our community. It is a challenge, though, hiring employees when this stuff's legal. So that's another conversation and another topic, and I'm sure that five of you are going to ask me that in the back of the room later. I'm like, how do you drug test these guns? Well, it's very challenging, uh, unless you're doing federal work, and then there's just one answer, and that's no. But uh, for, for us, you have to be a little bit flexible. Um, so you heard that I had the opportunity to do a TED Talk last year, and it was one of the highlights of my speaking career. And I was very, very fortunate, and my platform was this. And yes, I am using a Milwaukee Pro Press in that picture, and I actually sealed a pipe on stage. I think that's the first power tool ever used in a TED Talk. But what I was talking about was our workforce shortage. By the end of next year, it is estimated that we will be short one million workers in our country, trades unilaterally across the board. A million, right? So what does that mean? You in this room all know what that means to you, right? Some of you could grow a lot faster and larger and quicker if you had more workers, right? I know that we could. We sometimes will sit with three or four empty trucks. And you know what a heartbreaker that is when you have empty trucks and you can't find anyone to fill them because that is just money being you know, poured into an ashtray every single month that you don't fill the truck. We're going to be a million people short, and what has happened is we have a huge skills gap in our country. So for the last 20 years, parents are really the guilty ones, push their kids, college, 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 right? No one talked to them about going into the trades. And when I was in school, we were able to go half a day to college prep courses, and in the afternoon, we would be able to go to VOTAC and learn a variety of skills and trades, and we would be prepared to go out into the workforce, regardless of whether it was college or it was a trade. Now, with the advent of the Perkins Act, and there's money in our systems now to be building trade schools, we're starting to get a little bit of a clue, and the schools are really starting to talk to kids maybe as an alternative. However, we're still 20 years, we haven't been doing that. So as the baby boomers retire, and some of you are boomers in the room, you can see your eye on that retirement, are there enough workers to fill your spot? And the answer is no, there is not. And on millennial workers, a lot of them are choosing other paths. They're choosing things that are white collar jobs and computer jobs and what have you. And not to say that in construction there aren't those types of jobs because we need engineers and we need architects and we need CAD drawing specialists and we need mechanical drawing contractors. However, the actual trades where the work is being done is a situation that we all need to band together in all of our respective industries and we need to find more people to go out there. And my question was, why are there no women? There's women in the Army, 200,000 of them. There's women police officers and fire people and paramedics, but why are there no women in the trades? In fact, less than 1% of women are in HVAC. Less than 2% are in plumbing. And I don't understand why. And actually, I had a scholarship last year with PHCC in Colorado to give to a woman to go through school. So I, I partnered up with the trade school. PHCC had $1,500. The trade school had an HVAC scholarship for a woman to go all the way through free of charge and not one person applied, not one. And I started interviewing girls on why in the world they weren't even considering the trades. And what they told me is I didn't even know. I didn't know. So all of us need to use our voices and go into our schools and be talking about the trades and all of the opportunities. 
to boys and to girls and to parents and saying, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I know you want your kid to go to college, but maybe your kid isn't a great college candidate right now. Maybe they learn better with their hands. Maybe they're not the studious type. Or what about this? What if your kid got a trade certification and was able to earn a living and not live in your basement for the next 10 years, and they're able to go out and buy a house and start a family, and then maybe they can go back to college debt-free after that. I see some of you laughing. You have children in your basement. I know that you do. Or children who have come back, they call that the boomerang. So I, I stand on this soapbox all the time, but all of us who are in some sort of construction or trade have a responsibility that we need to be coaching and mentoring this new generation and getting them excited about the opportunity of not hauling around $100,000 or $200,000 in debt for the next umpteen years, right? So let's get these kids excited about the trades and get them involved because we need to do this. A million workers short, we're all feeling it. Right? And what's going to happen to the end user, the consumer, the customer? They're, and it's happening now already, and they don't even realize it. Consumers and customers and businesses that want something built have to pay more. And they have to wait longer because we do not have the manpower. In Denver area, they just built the Gaylord Hotel. Uh, some of you may have seen it. It is ginormous. It has 1,500 rooms. It opened right before Christmas. They had to recruit construction workers from all of the neighboring states, including this one, to get that thing built because there were not enough workers in Colorado to do that job. And it took way longer than it should have taken. It was over by about six months of where the original projections were because of the fact that we didn't have enough people. So I'm sure all of us in this room have a similar story about how your project didn't get done on time, or you could be taking on more work, or how you have empty trucks, or you had an ad out there. I have an ad out for an HVAC tech. I've had it out there for six months with a $2,500 sign-on bonus. And I get crickets. Nothing. Competitor of mine has a $10,000 sign on bonus. And I don't know what they're getting, but I don't even think that's the issue. I don't even think they're looking. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a problem, and we all need to take a look at it. So, one of the things about Sunshine, how we started, number one rule is we do great work. My husband is a boiler genius. This is one of his jobs up in the mountains of Breckenridge. This is a solar thermal boiler application. We are known for our boilers. We call our boiler technicians boiler geniuses. And in Denver, there are a lot of boilers in the older neighborhoods. So, and it's a dying art. No one knew it was coming to be boiler mechanics. And even our licensing system in Denver, Colorado doesn't have a boiler license but Denver does, and the only boiler license that they have is huge industrial boiler licenses for the boilers you have in a hospital. Nothing like for a home. So we don't even have a license for this, and it is a dying art, but this is one of the things we know, are known for. My husband's been published 11 times in national magazines for his work, and now that we have the progress, it makes it a lot easier to do this type of work. That was done with all soldering. But when you're training a new guy on boilers and their soldering isn't great, you really, in, in effect, have created a giant sprinkler system. Because <laughs> when you turn that thing on and it's not soldered properly, there is waterworks everywhere. So we are grateful to Milwaukee School for the progress and the Vega for those cities. So here we were in the summer of 2010, and here we are now. Uh, we have dogs at our company. We always have dogs. Our employees love them. Right now we have three. You're only seeing one in the photo. But we always have dogs, and our employees love it. And I have read that dogs in the workplace make people happier. So we, we love to bring our rescue dogs. We're failures at fostering. So we foster all of these golden retrievers and golden retriever mixes, and then we never give them away. So we have big dog presents at our shop. And in our quest of growth, we say that we have kissed a lot of frogs 
We have had some interesting technicians over the years and stories as long as the day. Um, what happened to them? Um, so when you're hiring service technicians, I was talking to someone about this earlier, it's a little bit different sometimes than hiring for construction. Because service technicians need a lot of different skills. They need to be personal with customers. They need to be friendly. They need to know how to sell, right? Because they're, they're, that's part of their job. They need to have really good skills and be thinking on their feet because they're not managed by a project manager. They are one-on-one -on -one with a customer. We do mainly residential and we do about 10% commercial, which is now growing because of the fact that we bought a small HVAC company at the end of the year, which we are taking over all their accounts and they are all commercial. But one of the things that we learned with this kissing of all the frogs is that we needed to hire our millennial workers differently than we had hired people in the past. So initially, you want to hire people just like you. My husband wanted to hire just like him, right? Had been in the trade for 30 years, could do boiling, plumbing, electrical. He could do everything. My husband has had three licenses for electrical, plumbing, and HVAC all at the same time. You can do everything. But the reality is most people can't do that. So we started hiring a lot of millennials, and we found out that this group of people was a lot different than um, we had hired before. So what we have done, too, is we have the curse of the photo. So every time we take a team photo, somebody leaves. So what we started doing is just turning it into a job ad. <laughs> so now we use this ad, do you fit in here? And surprisingly, we get more, of, more hits than we do from any other ad. And then the text of my ad says, do you feel misunderstood? Do you feel like no one is hearing you? Do you not feel appreciated? So we wrote down all of the things that we had heard from millennial workers out in the workforce of why they leave their jobs. Also, another thing that we who are a little bit older in the industry need to understand is that our younger workers don't plan to stay with us for 40 years. Like my dad was a carpenter and worked in a hardware store for 45 years, the same place. That doesn't happen anymore. We are lucky if we can keep our workers now two, maybe three years. And what is that catch that's going to make them stay? So we created our job ad based on all the things that we have heard. Now, we are getting really, really lucky with hiring plumbers now. So we have a great opportunity to hire plumbers. We run this ad, we put the text, and plumbers show up. HVAC technicians, totally different story. We have tried recruiting all over the country, but remember I told you about that marijuana thing. Uh, what happens sometimes if we recruit out of state, people come, they go <coughs> to Colorado, so excited, they're gonna ski, have this great lifestyle, all of these things, and then they find out about the dispensaries. <laughs> and things go south really fast. So we also learned that hiring people from out of state isn't the easiest thing for us to do. Also, our cost of living in Colorado is very, very expensive. The average one bedroom apartment is about $1,200. Our average home price is over $400,000 in the Denver metro area. So it makes it very, very difficult unless you're making really good money. And our plumbers make almost six figures. They're very close to six figures. Our HVAC guys make about 80 or above because it's seasonal and there's a couple of months that they're not busy. And that is another reason why we're bringing on more commercial so that we can keep everyone busy year round instead of just working residential, which is definitely has seasonality to it. So. What makes you think you're qualified for this job? Oh! Ah! Uh, don't punch it! Don't punch it! Yes, yes, yes,
they think we were this big giant company and could we share some of our wisdom? And here we are, a small company, and we do have a lot of awards. Um, and this is what we've been able to achieve. So the Angie's List Super Service Award, in some markets, Angie's List is a big deal, some markets it's not. In our market, it's a really good deal. It is a really high quality customer, it's expensive. Angie's List is not cheap, but we have found in our market, it's a great marketing tool for us. We have won that Super Service Award every single year, and that is their top 2% of all their contractors around the country win the Super Service Award. We have won the fastest growing company in the Denver Business Journal five years in a row. We continue to win that one. Number one business of the year by the Denver Business Journal, which is huge because there's thousands of companies that go after that award every single year. Colorado Companies to Watch. That Colorado Companies to Watch is put out by the Governor's Office of Economic Development for companies that have a huge impact in their community positively and for the rest of the community in hiring and servicing the community that we live in. We were also given the congressional honor in Colorado by Congressman Ed Perlmutter for our community involvement. We do a ton of pro bono work, and that is also something that you'll see here in a second that our millennial workers are really turned on by. Companies that are socially responsible and are doing pro bono work and doing things in their communities and serving the world in a bigger way than just doing construction. What, top 100 women-owned companies, I am on that list now every single year. Number four winner, Small Business of the Year last year, so we're dropping a little bit because as you grow, as you know, it's harder to keep winning those fastest growing ones because your margins and your percentages get smaller. Best places to work. So that's really interesting, the best places to work. Because we felt that if we won that, it would help us in our hiring. And it does in the plumbing area. It does not in the HVAC area. So I am not sure why that is exactly, that is something that I really plan to research one of these days. So we advertise that we have won this and our employees had to fill out a survey in order for us to win that. We also won the Better Business Bureau Torch Award. It is a 25 page application. We applied for it in 2016 and did not win. The company that won makes hearing aids for babies. So we were perfectly fine with their, them winning. We raised a glass of champagne and said good luck, but we're getting it next year and we did. Another 25 page application. But that really means something to customers and that is the highest award in the country for ethics. So we use that Court Torch Award in our marketing. It also helps give us a list in search engine optimization and in all of our digital marketing platforms. <coughs> Camp Experience, Women Who Rock. We have figured out, because we are woman-owned, that 40% of our clients are women. Baby boomer women have the most money of any other sector in our United States. They have the most money per person, right? So that is where we target our marketing is towards women's groups, women's organizations, the women's chamber, whatever that looks like, that is the market that we want. Because for us, that is our highest value customer. And they have a different level of trust with us because, they, because we're women owned. But that's not the only reason, and I'm going to show you why we have so many women customers. We also won Rotarian of the Year last year because we had a Brazilian exchange student that lived with us, and so um, we had a great time. He's back again for a second year. So those are all the awards that we have won and Business Person of the Year. And our team loves to go out and win these awards. This is something that it's a huge honor for them. They all take pride in it. We have all of our awards in the lobby of our office. So when people walk in, whether it be a customer or an applicant or a vendor, they can see all of the great things that we stand for. And a lot of the things that we're so proud of is our customer service. Mind-blowing customer service. 
This is what one of the judges said about us, that we're really a customer service company that just happens to be able to fix your plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. And that is something that we are so proud of because that really represents what we were out to talk about when we started this company. We needed to start this company with a bank. We had 950 competitors in our market when we opened Sunshine Plumbing Heating Air in 2012 in Denver. 950 people we were going head to head with. And big companies too. Some of them have a million dollar a year marketing budget. When you're in service, your marketing needs to be 8 to 10 percent of your revenue, especially if you want to grow. That tends to go down as the years go on and you have more and more repeat customers in your system. But initially, it's 8 to 10 percent of where you want to go needs to be spent on marketing. So we had companies out there spending a million dollars. So we needed to find something to make us unique and extremely different from everyone else in the marketplace in order to garner the market share and to make ourselves that puffer fish and to get ourselves looking bigger than we actually were. So one of the things that we did is we hired a lot of millennials. Now I know that some people of my generation like to make fun of the millennials, but here is the facts. They are an awesome group of workers, an awesome group of people coming into this marketplace. They just do things differently. And their values are different than my generation's, right? They do not want to work 70 hours a week. They don't. They want to have a balance, a really balanced life. They want to be able to go out and do things and have exploration and experiences not just work all the time. My generation, work, 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 work. And that's how we were judged. And that's how we judge ourselves. How many hours can we work? And I'm a hard worker. The new generation, that's not it. It's about experiences, and they will work to get the money to fulfill their experiences. Material things aren't as important to the newer generation than they are to mine. Of course, there's exceptions to that, but that's what we have found overall. And here's our millennial, most of our millennial workers, training. We have found that our millennial workers love training and education. As much as we can give them, they soak it up and they love it. And this has been a great experience for us, a learning experience. In fact, just this year, we left one of our furnace vendors that we had been with for many, many years and moved over to a new furnace vendor because of their training schedule. So when we were interviewing new training, new uh, HVAC companies and providers that could help us grow, we wanted to see their training facility. And we went out and studied everyone's training facility. And if they were, you know, three chairs in the back room of their shop, we weren't going with them. So we moved over to Carrier because in our market, Carrier is a huge facility. They have training almost every single night. And they'll come out to your shop and do on-site training as well which was paramount to us attracting and retraining these new workers. Another thing that we do every other month is we go down to the food bank and we serve as a team. So funny story, in the beginning, my husband and I thought it would be a great idea. There's a lot of homeless in downtown Denver, a lot. So we would get up early on Tuesdays, which is meeting day, and we would make this big assembly line at like 5 o'clock in the morning of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and we would hand them out to all of our technicians, and we would have them give them out to homeless people that they would run into in their travels throughout the day. We also would give them from time to time money to do pay it forward at the drive through or if they're at Starbucks or McDonald's or wherever they're doing to pay for the people behind them. They're wearing our shirts and our logos, and they're driving our truck. This is good media for us, and we're helping our community. So the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches started ending up underneath the front seat of our trucks. <laughs> and we had a big problem. So we decided to change the strategies, and now every other month we go down to the food bank and we serve. And the food bank loves it because the food bank of the Rockies serves thousands of people each week 
This particular location is in our community. It's right down the street. They feed about 250 people twice a month. And there's no requirements. You don't need to show that you're broke or whatever, you're on assistance. It doesn't matter. If you're hungry and your family could use some extra food, you can come to Food Bank of the Rockies. So when our team comes, they're able to open up a whole other lane, like these tables here. We stand on one side, people walk down, and they put all of their food in their baskets. And our guys will go and help them put it in their car, or help them get on the bus, or whatever that looks like, and to fill their baskets with food. Our millennial workers love this type of thing, right? It doesn't really, it costs us a couple of hours of work, right? Because we have to pay them while they're at the food bank. We're not going to ask them to do it for free. A lot of the guys will, though. They say, you know what, don't pay me for that time. Take that money and give it back to the food bank and make a donation. And we also now have two technicians that go to the food bank every single time it runs. So the first and third Friday, it's an hour and a half in the morning. They, we give them the time off and we pay them to go if that's what they want to do is to go to the food bank. <clears throat> so that is something that's incredibly important to them and their pride of working for our company. Another thing that we do is every single October, we donate money for every single sale that we make and every single insta install to the Cancer Society. So our guys wear pink shoe covers, we advertise our logo in pink, and we do a huge push, and we are able to raise five and six thousand dollars every October, and we donate it to the American Cancer Society. So that's another thing that our newer workers are really excited about, is doing things that are sustainable and good for the community. Thank you. So here are some of the things that we do um, with our millennial workers. We have designed these benefits for our millennial workers because this is what's important to them. Now I know you're going to think I'm crazy when I tell you the first one, and that's unlimited personal time off. So we do not pay you for unlimited personal time off, but if you have had a dream to go to Nepal for a month to find yourself, we are not going to stop you from doing that. We will let you go. There's a couple of conditions to that. You need to give us ample notice, and you really need to cover yourself with someone else. Another thing that we do with that, we really encourage people when they're trying to do a longer trip, like three weeks or four weeks, which has only happened a couple of times, we ask them to do it in our months that we're slow. So we know what months are our dip months, and we ask that if they're going to take an extended time off, to so please do it then. We have legal shield. I know that might sound a little weird as a benefit, but we have had so many workers that have had a custody battle, or a divorce situation, or a probate situation, or something legal that stresses them out and makes them a distracted employee, right? So Legal Shield costs 20 bucks a month. They can call a lawyer whenever they need. They get a free will, they get a power of attorney, whatever they need through the Legal Shield process. Disturbingly, every single employee I have has used that. No. Um, another thing that it does is they will fight your speeding tickets for you, or traffic tickets. So if somebody's in your truck and they get a speeding ticket, it behooves you to have them represented by an attorney and hopefully not have points, which is going to cost you money on the, on the insurance program. We, of course, have paid training. We have Dave Ramsey Financial Peace. So why would we have that, right? Well, a lot of you may have heard this story before, where somebody is coming to you all the time for an advance on their pay. So finally, at one point, I got really fed up. I'm like, you know what? This is ridiculous. You mismanaged your money, and now it's my problem, right? And now I'm giving you an advance. And it seems like every single time I've given someone an advance, it's been a blow, right? They either leave or something happens. And it's just a bad experience. So this is what we say now. I'm sorry, we don't give advances, but we will pay for you to go to Financial Peace University, and when you get your emergency fund saved up, which is $1,000, we will put $250 into your savings account for you. That is something we will do. And so no one asked me for an advance. 
and it doesn't really seem that people are stressed out. And now we are going to start offering financial peace in our office twice a year. So if you want to go through it and take it, we'll be happy to pay for it. We're going to bring in an instructor. Paid training, that's really no big deal. Volunteer days, as you just heard. Paid vacations, not that big of a deal. That's a standard benefit. Here's something that we do that is unique, though. The prizes for trips for reviews. We use a system called Review Buzz. And every time one of my technicians comes to your house or business, he hands you a little card. And he said, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I am judged on my performance here today. And the best way that my employer knows what I am doing out here is by you writing me a review. So if you would go on this Review Buzz site and review me, that would mean the world to me. Okay. So they get this email after we close out the ticket and they can go right on the email and they can click, click, click and they can write a review. So now the second part of that is our technicians can save up points. So they get 500 points for a review, a good review, and they get 1,500 points for a Yelp review that sticks. Because Yelp is really hard to get that review to stick, a five star. And they can then use those points to buy things. So they can get a big screen TV, they can get a the top prize is a vacation, 40,000 points, trip for two to Mexico, right? And it takes them about, if they're really focused, it takes them about seven months to get 40,000 points. The way I'm able to do that, I travel a lot. I have a ton of miles. I can send you and one other person, your spouse or your kid, on a vacation. It doesn't really cost me anything. And I have a timeshare. So I let them use the timeshare week in Mexico or wherever they want, and they can go ahead and use that as a trip. In, in between, they can get a $25 Home Depot card all the way up to the trip, and everything in between. Our games, basketball tickets, baseball tickets, football tickets, whatever it is, are all prizes they can win. So that does a bunch of different things. It helps me to know that my technicians are doing a great job because you wouldn't write them a good review if they weren't. It also makes them be more accountable that people are looking at their performance because we are in a transparent world. Whatever we do on a job site is viewed and reviewed by the general public nowadays, right? In the form of surveys, reviews, feedback, whatever that looks like, it's all about feedback. We have a tool lounge, that really not that big of a big thing. Red Wing Boots is something that our guys love. In our area, the Red Wing Boots organization has a big truck, and I don't know if they have it here, but it's like a rolling showroom. So twice a year, on surprise, on our Tuesday morning meetings, the guys will walk out of the meeting and the Red Wings truck will be there. It's like a beacon in the light, it's glowing. And they can go inside and pick themselves a pair of boots. So we allow them to spend $100. If they want more, we'll do it on a payroll deduction. So we try to get them um, a summer boot and a winter boot. So that does a couple of different things. They love it. They feel great about it. And I know that they look neat and clean and put together when they're walking into one of our customers' locations. So that's something that they love. We pay their health club membership. Everyone thinks this is such a great benefit, but how many of them do you think we use this? Uh, one. <laughs> one person uses the health club membership benefit, but it's there. So we have birthday parties, that's no big deal, and then we just have the standard um, type of benefits, health, life, dental, and vision. Now I'm going back to this one. And these are some of the places that they can get their reviews. So I told you that we do things a little bit differently. So these are some of the things that really set us apart. So that photo of my husband was taken, uh, we were doing a, a show, and we had that toilet bowl game, so you would throw the toilet paper in there and you could win prizes, and we snapped this photo of him. So since that day, it's been a sort of a funny joke, every single customer that we serve, residential or commercial, gets a <coughs> thank you card from us. And that is on the cover of our thank you card. And everyone thinks it's funny, and our guys will walk into people's houses, and that picture of William will be on the refrigerator, and it's a, it's a big joke. And then, if you spend more than a certain amount of money, we will send you brownies. 
So we send brownies to every single customer that spends more than $500. And they're not Colorado brownies. Just to be clear on that. Not bad. It's not bad. So just to be clear. We have dog biscuits on all of our trucks. As you heard earlier, we're big dog people. People in Colorado are big dog people. Wherever you go, everyone has a dog. So all of our guys have dog biscuits on the truck, and they will give them to the rover. We have to tell the people in Boulder they're not organic. They're just regular ones. Um, so hotels. What does hotels have to do with all of this? We don't run emergency service. Now you're probably going, that is freaking crazy. Why don't you do that? That's so much money you're losing. Here's the deal. I can't get technicians as it is, never mind ones who are willing to be sober one week a month and be on call, right? So we're like, how are we going to fix this problem? We started doing on-call rotations. We don't have any hospitals or anything like that. Like if they went down, there's going to be a huge upset. We really don't. We probably wouldn't even take a customer like that, and we intentionally do not take any marijuana customers. And the reason for that is this. One, it smells really bad, and our technicians hate the way it smells on your clothing, and they have emergencies. Those crops of marijuana cost, are worth millions of dollars sometimes. Right? The last thing we want to do is be responsible for their grow house going down at 2 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Right? So in order to combat not doing on-call service, especially in residential, we will put you in a hotel. I have a great relationship with Hilton and with Marriott. It cost me maybe $125 for me to put you and your family in a hotel, and we will get there on Monday morning. We have never lost a sale when I've done that. I've done it for no heat calls, and I've done it for no air conditioning calls or a broken water heater call. So if I invest $125, I'm going to get a $5,000 customer or better on Monday. And customers love this. They will write all over social media about us putting them in a hotel. The kids loved it. And I try to put them like a Samson in because they have the free breakfast, they usually have a pool, especially if they have children. A couple of times I've had to find a hotel that accepts pets, because if they have pets, we need to find a special hotel and pay the deposit. But I've never lost a customer by not having on-call service. And we do answer the phone 24-7, so we have people answering and booking calls are just not emergency. If you purchase a tankless water heater, a boiler, a furnace, an air conditioner from us, we send this gift basket to you. And the way it works, there's a little card in there that says, if you take a picture of yourself and post it on social media, please do so with this basket and we will give you a $50 coupon. So we send these baskets out, they cost about $60. They're all Colorado products in there except for the Pellegrino. Uh, we learned our lesson. Years ago in the beginning, we used to do a wine basket with glasses, and they had our logo, and it was fabulous. And we would deliver them, we would have our own people deliver them on your front porch because you weren't at work, and you weren't home during the day. Well, we found out that it is illegal to leave alcoholic beverages in a basket like that on somebody's front porch because little Johnny down the street can get his paws on it or what have you. So we switched over to the gift basket company, really smart people. What they do now is they call our customers and say, we have a gift basket delivery for you. We'd like to deliver it to your work. What is the address? So now our customers get this beautiful gift basket delivered to their work, and all of their coworkers start calling us. Right? It's like, your plumber sent you a gift basket? Are you kidding me? That never happened to me. So that is another thing that we do. Thank you. We're having quicker problems. If we screw up, we always send flowers and say we're sorry. That is something that is a motto of ours. It is our core value. Just do the right thing. All of our employees know it. If you ask them any question about this, just do the right thing. And one of the things about just do the right thing is if you screw up, own it. I'm sorry I made a huge mistake. I promise you will never happen again. 
please give us another chance. So we always send flowers. And then these are our 12 points of love, which really is not that big of a deal. I'm sure that all of you have 12 steps in your process of how you service customers. The difference is, is that I publish this on my website. And all of a sudden, we got all of this media buzz about Sunshine's 12 points of love. Even customers will talk about it. They'll say, 12 points of love, that's why I hire Sunshine. And then you'll hear them telling other customers and referrals, but Sunshine has the 12 points of love. All I did was take our customer service strategy and write it down. And we always answer the phone with, how can we make you smile today? Because I can tell you this, when you're in service planning and meeting, no one calls you on their best day. <laughs> they are already pissed. There's poop on the floor, they're hot, they're cold, they couldn't take a shower, like they are angry. So we try to just diffuse it right at the very beginning before it gets any uglier than it already is. We always send a reminder. Everything we do is either text or email. So we send them reminders about their appointments. This is something that our women clients, I told you that 80% of our clients are women. One of the things that they love is a bio of our technician. We send a photo and a blurb about his background. So Joe's been a master plumber for 30 years. On the weekends, he loves riding his bike with his family. Um, this is a picture of him and his daughter, Chloe. They do all of these great things together. And now the customer feels like they already know the technician before he arrives. And they don't have no concern about this strange person coming into their house. We have used no paper. I shared with that you earlier. We follow up with an email. We also call. We call this a happy call, asking someone how things were with their experience with us. Our technicians know that we do this. This helps to keep them accountable, right? Was he wearing shoe covers? Was he pleasant? Did he give the dog a biscuit? Did he say thank you? Did he show you three options? All of the things that we train them to do, we ask in the happy call so we can ensure that all of the steps are being followed with every single customer. We always follow up with specials, always send thank you notes, gift baskets, boo-boo gifts, dog biscuits, and put you in a hotel. So I have this 12 points of love published everywhere. And so many people will call, well, why did you call us? Oh, because you have the 12 points of love. Okay, all right, well, there you go. So whatever works, and we figured this out early that people like to see that. Um, here is something else that we're really proud of. We have a patent and a trademark for something called video plan. And how this came about was this, right? So sometimes you have to make uh, lemonade out of lemons. Our real estate market in Denver is hopping. Like two summers ago, man, they were bidding $20,000, $30,000 over the asking price, and it was insane. And the realtors were driving us crazy. If there's any realtors in the room, I'm sorry, but you were driving us nuts. Because really what you want, what the realtors wanted was to get an estimate so they could close the deal. They really didn't want to do the work, right? They need to know how much it is for a new furnace because the inspector said the furnace is shot and the seller needed to make a concession. The seller really didn't want to put a new furnace in. They just wanted a price so they could say, okay, we'll take five grand off and you know you go get your furnace yourself. So they were making us crazy. So our guys were getting pissed. So something I didn't mention, which is important to know, our technicians are on 100% commission. They get paid for warranty work and things like that for hourly, but they're on straight commission. So the last thing they want to do is to be driving all over town in traffic, going to all these realtor calls where they weren't, had no shot of selling anything because the people really didn't want to buy anything. So we came up with this idea of video plumber. So what happens is, Mr. Realtor, we can give you an estimate right now, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a video connection between our master plumber and you. You're going to show us your problem on the phone, and we are going to give you a quote right over the phone. Right. So this is the, the logo for video plumber, and here is a photo of my husband actually doing video plumber. 
So he's sitting in the office. Why my husband does this mainly is because he's been a master electrician, he is a master plumber, and he's a NAIT certified HVAC technician, and he's not in the field anymore. So he can do an estimate in the office like this via video feed. Do we do a lot of them? No, right? But we also know that a younger generation is coming up, and these are the customers that we want to attract, reason why we don't advertise in the phone book, because we want a younger, newer customer that's going to be with our company for the next 20 or 30 years. Even if William and I are not going to be around, we, we won't, we will not be in business in 20 or 30 years, but someone is going to get the benefit of us catering to this younger market. And it's a microwave society. They want it now. They don't want to wait for somebody to come and give you an estimate and then come back next Tuesday to do the work and they might not even want to do the work once they hear the price. So we patented and trademarked Video Plumber, and this is what we do now. And I will tell you, we don't do a lot of them, but the buzz around Video Plumber is unbelievable. Everyone will say, why did you hire Sunshine? Oh, they have Video Plumber. Okay, well, did you ever use it? No, but they have it. So they make a big deal of this Video Plumber, and so we're delighted. And it was really interesting. And I do not understand why no one else has come up with this idea before, because when I applied for the patent, I got it within six weeks and the trademark, which is unheard of. It could take a year usually. That's what my attorney said, be prepared, it could take a year. That means that no one else is doing it. And I don't understand why. I mean, at, at some point, you could take this even further. You could have a call center with disabled workers and veterans and they could be sitting, maybe they can't go in the field anymore, but they can do estimates via video. And of course, I have a lot of mouse print, right? If we can't see it on the video when we get there, the price may be, have to be adjusted, because if I can't see everything, then we don't know. So this is just something, once again, to be that purple cow and that puffer fish to set us aside from everybody else in the marketplace. And one final thing that we do, and Guys, you're going to think this is kind of crazy, but it actually works. So everyone used to come to me, all the women, and say, man, I love your clothes. I love your clothes. And I would say, oh, I got them at the thrift store. I got them at Goodwill. And I would, I would people would go, can you take me shopping? Please take me shopping. And by the way, Wichita is a really good Goodwill, because Jolene took me there last time I was here. It's awesome. So everyone wanted me to take them thrifting. And I'm like, I do not have time to take you thrift store shopping. I mean, I'm busy, I'm traveling and running a company and what have you. So I came up with an idea and I said, you know what? We need a bus and we can take people thrifting on a bus. So lo and behold, the lady in my Rotary Club works for the city bus company and is able to get a bus for nonprofit use, right? Then, Sunshine Plumbing Heating Air sponsored the breakfast and lunch. So the way it works is we sell tickets between $50 and $75 per person. They come to my shop on a Saturday morning. I give you a lesson about thrift store shopping and about fashion. What's in right now, what's coming in, what's going out, what have you. And we have you write a map of what you're going to go thrifting for. Then we get all of these 40 people on a bus, and I take them around, and we go thrift store shopping, and the money they paid for the ticket goes to a charity. So we've chosen all different charities. I've, pub I've uh, partnered with Goodwill on some of these things. Then we ended up getting all the Goodwill preventative maintenance agreements of their 30 stores in Denver. Pretty cool, right? And I told you, that 40% or large percent of our customers are women. So women love following the Thristanista, which is the name I came up with, online. So I have dozens of followers that follow Thristanista around, want to see where I am, where I'm shopping, what I'm doing, and, oh, by the way, you own a plumbing and heating company? So all of my Thristanista followers are Sunshine customers now. So this was a way of us serving the community. We raised over $10,000 last year for charities. It's totally fun. 
It's totally different than the rubber chicken luncheons that most charities do, right? Or just the same old, same old. Get a whole bunch of ladies on a bus, we end up with champagne at the end of the day, and they get to tour my shop and they all get coupons for their next plumbing service. So that is a strategy that can way outside the box. And I, and I mentioned that I'm always wearing thrifted clothes and today is no different. The dress that I am wearing retails for $1,800. It's Givenchy Couture. So guys, this is the equal of getting that big Traeger grill that you can pull for like $25. Because I paid $40 for this dress and it was $1,800 retail. So those are some of the things that I write these stories online and these blogs and have all of these followers. So, so my goal always when I give a, a talk like this and tell you our story is that regardless of what your business is, that it makes you think, what can I do different? What can I do to make myself more relevant and more current? What can I implement right away on Monday morning? And I challenge you this. On Monday morning, you are going to be the new CEO of your company. You're going to walk in and look at your company and say, I'm going to rock star my business and make it all that it can be, the very best that it can be. What am I going to do? And you're going to pretend that no one in your workplace is related to you. <laughs> I know that may be hard. And say, you know what? Is everyone here in the best seat, in, on the bus, in my company? Do they belong here? Are they the best person for the job? Do I need to do some shuffling around? Do I need to make some movement? Can I serve my customers better than I ever have? What can I do to attract a younger workforce? What can I do to illuminate the opportunity we have in the trades and construction industry for young people to be interested and want to come and work here? So I thank you so much for the opportunity to present our story, the Sunshine Story, to you today. And I encourage you to all go and rock star your business. Thank you.